Good morning, everybody. How are we all? Are we all well? I do hope that you're okay this morning. My name is Ali Board and I am broadcasting live via my Facebook page, Alison Seaboard Artist, to bring you Technique Tuesday. Now, if you haven't participated before, then uh, please do put a little comment in the chat. Uh, let me know where you are. Wave and say hello if you know me. And wave and say hello if you don't know me. And uh, every week I bring you Technique Tuesday to share with you something that I'm thinking about or something that I'm working on or something that I'm experimenting with in the hope that it will help you out with a bit of technical knowledge, that it might inspire you to have a go with uh, a technique or some materials or something yourself. If you ever have any ideas for Technique Tuesday, just let me know. And I promise I will try to put it into a future program. So shall we see who's in the room? Uh, good morning, lovely D. Very nice to see you here. Sup, Gary? Uh, B, good morning. Hilary, Ali D, uh, Pauline. Oh, gosh, everyone's flooding in this morning. Uh, Fran, Lou and Linda. Uh, I'm sure Cheryl, good morning. I'm sure there are more of you out there. Please don't be shy. Please do say hello. I promise I won't uh, embarrass you or anything like that. We try to build a little community both on this page and over on my learning to paint page too. And it's just very nice in these times where we're not able to get together quite as much as we would like to, to keep in touch. Who else have we got? Uh, Barbara, good morning, Andrea and Linda as well. You are all astonishingly welcome. So this week I thought we would talk about Perlex. Now, don't worry. If you don't know what Perlex is, I'm going to explain it and uh, I'm going to show you the real basics of, of how I use Perlex and I'm going to show you some examples of how I use it too. And I'm going to give you uh, a bit of a link to where you can see me use it in other projects as well. So if you have used it or if you're thinking, I haven't used it, but it looks delicious. If you saw my little video clip, I think somebody said it looked like brown sugar. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Um, let us know. Uh, who have we got in the room? Uh, Jean is saying, I've had some Perlex for weeks but didn't know how to use them. Brilliant. Jean, by the end of this morning, I'm hoping that I can answer all that for you. Good morning, Tony. Lynn. Uh, who else have we got? Ali. Sally. Oh, gosh. Karen. Uh, Fran. Yes. Brush sticking up in my hair because running late this morning because the dog had me up all night. So I'm a little bit bleary eyed and literally threw myself in the shower, threw myself back out of the shower, brushing the hair. It's all good. <laughs> Shall um, I take you to the overhead camera and I can show you exactly uh, what Perlex is and we can have a bit of a chat about uh, what I do with it. So here we go. Here we've got the kind of basic kit uh, to do with Perlex. Morning Janet, morning Julie, uh, morning Patricia. <laughs> um, here is Perlex. This is made by a company called Jacquard um, who make an awful lot of uh, really interesting products actually and um, they're kind of more associated with dyes and textile type things but Perlex is uh, probably one of their best selling products. Now what is it? It is a mica based powder so you can probably see in the camera that it already has a bit of a shimmer going on and it's an inert powder. Now what does that mean? What that means is you can mix it with whatever you like to turn it into whatever sort of paint that you want. So for example, you can mix it with a gum arabic and that will make it into a watercolor or a gouache. You could mix it in with an acrylic um, medium such as a matte medium or a gloss medium or even a PVA glue and turn it into acrylic paint. You can mix it in with a linseed oil and turn it into an oil paint. You can if you want to, sadly not that my nails are, but you can even mix it with a clear nail varnish and turn it into sparkly nail varnish. Now it isn't the kind of grade for makeup, but it would certainly be all right on your hands. Let's take the lid off and we can see inside and you can see exactly what it is. I mean, look at the shine in there. Isn't that beautiful? 
It can be used over the top of, um, what's that clay called? Fimo, that type of thing, that kind of uh, both air drying clay and uh, oven drying uh, clay. You can use it on top of those too. Uh, who else have we got in the room just before I get into this? Uh, Wendy, good morning. Susan, Carol, Jilly, Pat and Maggie too. You're all very welcome. Now I use weapon of choice. I use my uh, little coffee stirrer. You can tap it out onto uh, a palette or similar but I tend to find that it kind of all falls out of the pot and I have no control over it. So there it is, just a little amount. Uh, let me spread it out for you a little bit and you can see it's not, I wouldn't class it as a metallic because it's not kind of reflective enough to be a metallic. I would class it as something that just has a sort of an iridescence or a lovely kind of shimmer. So there it is in its powder form and we'll talk more about what I do with that in just a second. But I thought you might like to see um, some of the colour range. Now this is just, I've done my little colour swatch on black card. This is not black watercolour paper, this is just black card and this is by no means all of the colours. These are just some of my favourites. So if I take you through that colour chart, the golds I particularly like bronzes and the coppers and uh, you can also get it in some rather delicious colours that actually is flamingo pink just because it's on the black it looks slightly lilac-y violet uh, you've got a spring green actually they're showing up very well in the camera this morning uh, turquoise all sorts of colours that's a real favourite of mine misty lavender you can't imagine why can you and uh, solar gold so this is the one that I am going to be demonstrating with this morning the solar gold is one of my favorites and um, just because you can see you, it really really reflects uh, and then we've got lovely rose gold too because rose gold rose gold has been kind of on trend doesn't it for uh, quite a number of years so you know me and uh, my swatches that's there with my little binding ring at the top so that I can make sure that I choose exactly the color that I want now I was talking about the mediums that uh, you can mix it with and uh, today I'm using a gum arabic. This is also made by Jacquard. It doesn't have to be a powdered gum arabic, it can be a liquid gum arabic um, but the powdered gum arabic I just find interesting because I find it nice and easy to control. So I'm going to put a little bit of it down here onto my palette next to it. Now Jacquard themselves recommend that you have four parts metallic powder to one part gum arabic. But I actually don't like that consistency myself. I prefer it to be a little bit stickier. And that is what gum arabic is. Gum arabic is a tree resin, comes from a type of acacia plant. And um, I like it to be really quite sticky, more like a gouache, I would say, than a watercolour. So I do a little bit more one-to-one. -one. Now that, um, you can mix it together when it's dry, like that, before you add water to it, or you can just pile it together. I just wanted you to see how you can very easily combine the two. And then, let's get rid of that. And let's uh, get myself some water. And we'll add a little bit of water to this. And um, if you particularly use the gum arabic uh, form of making it up into a paint, then you're not going to waste it because if you did this in a half pan or in a palette that you don't particularly want to clean out, you can let it dry, reconstitute it with water and you can use it, you can re-wet it again and again and again. So this particular type of gum arabic does not dry waterproof. So you can mix up a batch of it in a little buddy cup or something with a lid and uh, it's reusable. Don't think that you've got to kind of guess how much you need. So there you can see it in its powder form and here you can see it mixed up in its liquid form. What are people saying about it? Uh, Solar Gold is the one I now have three pots of. Would share it with all of you if I wasn't so far away. <laughs> oh, Linda, you are a sweetheart. Um, yes, well, to be honest, Linda, you're probably going to be using quite a lot of Solar Gold. <laughs> you can see from my pot, look, almost at the end of that little one. I've only done a few demonstrations recently. 
So here is a piece of the Van Gogh black watercolour paper. Uh, this is one of my favourites in the watercolour paper. And look what happens the minute that I stroke it on. Isn't that beautiful? It's just delicious, isn't it? Now let me show you as well what you can do by thinning it out. So if I add a little bit more water to it, exactly as you would use some watercolour techniques, then we can make a much thinner consistency of it. Let's do a few brush strokes of that. And then if we add a bit more water still, let's get it so that it is uh, really quite wishy-washy. You can get uh, quite a thin coating of it on your paper. And then if I hold that up to the camera and uh, move that around, hopefully you can see that kind of shine just bounces off the surface, doesn't it? Isn't that beautiful? I just think it's a really lovely product. Now, of course, you're always going to say, well, do I want to have a metallic? Do I want to add something else to my range? So I thought I would do for you this morning is show you some examples of where I have used it. Now, admittedly, the examples that I've got for you today are all on black, but that doesn't mean that that's the only thing you can do with it. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. So I had uh, some little off cuts of uh, watercolour paper and I decided to see if I could combine watercolour and perlex together. So I've got uh, a little kind of opaque, I think this is cerulean in the background, watercolour background. And if I just tilt that ever so slightly, you can see my daffodil has just got a bit of pizzazz to it. So I've got the, the solar gold around the edge and I've got one of the uh, russety kind of coppery colours in the centre. And I've got a bit of that spring green over the stalk too. I've also spattered it because it's one of my pictures and why wouldn't I? So there you go. You've got that kind of nice shimmer to it. Uh, those of you who know that I do love a seed head, I've got uh, one of my infamous poppy seed heads here. And again, have used watercolour um, around the background and uh, used a bit of perlex over the top too. If you want to see how I painted this particular painting, then pop over to the Artist Demo Days Facebook page because there's a tutorial in the video archive on there of exactly how I painted this picture. So there you go. So I've got the main kind of uh, watercolour down, but I've got that little bit of pizzazz over the top just to make it sing on the black. Mick is asking, uh, good morning Vera, good morning Pauline. Uh, Mick is asking, what effect would you get if you paint over these products with watercolour, acrylic inks or brusho? Mick, I'm sort of assuming that you mean if you paint over the top of the brusho, um, over the top of the perlex. Um, if you use gum arabic with it, it is going to move. Uh, if you use something else that is more permanent, such as a, an acrylic medium or a PVA glue, then it's going to be permanent. And of course, don't forget that you could mix it in with something else. So there's nothing to say that you couldn't pop a little bit of powder in with an existing watercolour colour or in with an existing acrylic ink. Or you could uh, mix it in with your brush -o and see what else happens. Be experimental. You know that's my watchword, don't you? And uh, here we've got another one. Here we've got a little daisy where this is uh, much more traditional, really. We've got a, a watercolour background. We've got white gouache on the petals of the daisy. And I think this was a Posca pen, if I remember correctly, for the stem. But I wanted a little bit of gold. And so in the middle, just for that yellow centre, I just think it adds a bit of dimension to it because it is quite tricky sometimes to paint on the black. Um, because it can look a bit flat and I think Perlex is uh, kind of the, the perfect opportunity to add some pizzazz to your work. They certainly show up much better on the black than any of the other um, surfaces. And here we've got uh, my giraffe, which I have shared with you uh, before. This was just an experiment for a workshop that I'm still thinking about, if I'm honest, um, about how I can turn it into a workshop that I can deliver online. And whilst it is a giraffe and it is on black paper and you have got watercolour, what I did was use a bit of copper in there. So you can see as soon as I start to shift it, 
you get that kind of little bit of added dimension on the surface. And that's why I like them really. So it's a challenge enough, isn't it, to, to work on the black paper and to get this kind of smoky effect and to get whatever your subject matter is to stand out. But I do think that little bit extra perlex just helps them enough to kind of make it have that three dimensional look. Now, of course, you don't have to limit yourself to using them like a watercolour. And if any of you are SAA members out there, yesterday over on the SAA's website, I did a demonstration of a bald eagle. You might have seen it crop up on my social media yesterday. And on that, I experimented with using Perlex and a water mixable oil medium for using just as a kind of uh, bit of sparkle on his feathers. And if you are an SAA member, I will let you uh, pop over there to see what I did with it. So I hope that gives you a bit of an insight into Perlex. Um, I'd love to, to hear your experiences with it, of how you've used it. I know some of you have used it in fabric paint. I know some of you have dusted it over clay. I know some of you have put it into resin for your jewellery making. That's why I like it. It is a fantastically versatile product. And you know me, I like a product that will do several things or certainly work on several surfaces. Because we all spend a lot of money on our art materials, don't we? So if we're going to invest in a product, I want it to be able to be able to work in with my watercolours or my drawings. Or now I know I can work in, in with my oil paints. So that's really exciting. Um, what are people saying in the Facebook chat? A lot of people are saying that they like the giraffe. I have got it in here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, Pat, thank you very much, saying that my bald eagle demonstration was fabulous. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Karen, fabric paint. Um, yes, definitely. Uh, have an experiment with those. You obviously need to fix your fabric paints, but the binder in them should be enough to kind of seal that lovely uh, metallic shimmer on the surface. Uh, Cheryl is saying that she has christened my giraffe Jerry. <laughs> I love it. Love a bit of alliteration. What's not to like about that? Um, and Janet is very kindly saying that my SAA demo yesterday was great. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jean. Oh, brilliant. She's saying now I shall have an enjoyable afternoon with Perlex. Then uh, my work is done. Thank you very much. Now, you might have seen on my social media yesterday that I've got a lot of things to experiment with. And I certainly have got a lot of ex things to experiment with this week. I had my demo uh, in oils for the SAA yesterday. I got Perlex with you lovely people this morning. Uh, this evening, I have got a watercolour pencil workshop. And then, as you have probably seen, we've got a big Artist Demo Days event at the end of the week. The six of us, so uh, myself, Ali Hargreaves, um, <laughs> why can't I remember everybody's name? Myself, Ali Hargreaves, Sharon Hurst, Denise Allen, Jeremy Ford and Matthew Palmer. I've got brain fog this morning, I do apologise. Um, are get, coming together for one of our fantastic events where we all take an hour slot and we share our latest experiments with you. It's one with a difference this time. We are all working from the same starting point. We've all been uh, given a photograph by Sharon of Hailing Island in the UK and we're using it as a point to start for our projects. I'm going first this time because I've got to disappear off to Wales on Saturday to uh, teach one of my first workshops which I'm very excited about. So if any of you guys out there um, I'm going to see you on Saturday, I cannot wait to see you. I hope you can uh, join me on Friday for that and uh, no doubt I will speak to you within the week. But take care, all of you, won't you? Don't forget, keep sharing your Perlex uh, things over on the Learning to Paint Facebook page or message me with them because you know I always love to hear from you. Take care, lovely people. I will see you again next week. And next week, hopefully, I won't be so tired and the dog won't keep me up the night before. I think I need much more coffee in my life. You take care, all right? Bye.